Hold up. Wait. We want to thank you for listening to the Farms Not Farms podcast presented by Gorilla Healer by giving you a 20% off discount code to GorillaHealer.org. Use code SEASON2 when you check out at GorillaHealer.org off any item not currently on sale. And also, be sure to check out BuildTheSoil.com, our Farms Not Farms podcast sponsor for all of your organic soil amendment needs. BuildTheSoil.com, the Internet's number one spot for your organic soil amendments. Back to the podcast. Welcome, everyone, to the Farms Not Farms podcast. Here today with a very special guest from abroad, all the way from Amsterdam, we have Mila Jensen, the hash queen. And without further ado, Mila, would you be so kind to introduce yourself a little bit and give the people just who aren't yet aware of you uh, a little bit of background about who you are okay well it was in uh, 92 90 to 94 that i well it's a long story i came back from india where i'd had wonderful hash to smoke came back here in 1988 and suddenly there was coffee shops everywhere when i left here in 68 there was no coffee shops and they all sold weed, and uh, so I tried it. But all the time when I was in Asia and before in Amsterdam, there was only hash. So after 20 years of smoking hash, I didn't take kindly to weed. <laughs> the only hash these coffee shops really were selling was Moroccan, and I was very spoiled in uh, India. I could get Afghani, Nepali, Kashmiri, Manali, Malana, it was just magnificent. So I was not impressed with the uh, Moroccan hash they sold in the coffee shops here. Mm. But another thing that was happening, I was growing weed at that time because um, it was even many people in the government were promoting it and that Holland would have a green golden future. <laughs> but wow. um, so I was growing weed. And I'd learned in my time in India and other countries there how people made the hash. So I had the material. I got a cloth and started making the hash, kind of waffling the material over the screen. Crystals would fall through. It would take you an hour to make about enough for one joint, one spliff. So that was quite a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I was standing in front of the clothes dryer, you know, where all the clothes are tumbling around inside the dryer. Mm -hmm. And I realized I was doing exactly the same with the uh, leaf material or the plant material. I was also mm -hmm. kind of waffling around. Next day, we got a second hand drying machine. We ripped out the heat. We tied a screen around the drum, threw in a bunch of material and waited and low pressed up. Within five minutes, you could already see the first crystals starting to fall down through the screen. Beautiful. So that's the uh, pollinator was born at that time. And it's, uh, I guess it's memorable because even though people had been making ash for thousands of years, this was the first mechanical tool that they could use to separate the crystals. And uh, that made life a lot easier. So people did, uh, we went around the country uh, taking our uh, prototype of the pollinator, say, uh, have some material ready, about 200 grams and a cup of coffee. And while we drink your coffee, see what's going to happen. And they were all amazed because it was the first ever machine that could separate the crystals. And that's the reason I think I became known as the Ash Queen because it gave people the opportunity to make their own hash. We started producing the machines. Later, I came up with the isolator bags and then the bubblator, which is like a little washing machine or a big washing machine. And uh, people laugh and uh, I also think no guy could ever have thought to start using a washing machine to make it. <laughs> <laughs> When you That's think about perfect. it, it's perfect. That washing machine was designed to get dirt out and get your dirty socks clean. 
So, okay, with ice water, you put in some marijuana trim or buds and let it do its work. And it will remove all those crystals as far as it's concerned <laughs> in its washing machine brain. Those crystals are the dirt. So at the end of a round of washing, <laughs> all the crystals be, be floating around in the runoff water. And you just run that through a few different screen bags. Mm. And crystals. Absolutely. In fact, that water um, is kind of beneficial as well, isn't it? Have you ever uh, communed yeah. with that water? Well, we used to uh, feed it to the plants because mm. it has all the water soluble nutrients in it. And having been <laughs> absorbed in the water, it's the easiest form for the plant roots to take in the nutrients if it's already in a soluble form. Mm. So yeah, we used to use that. Nice. Um, I've actually drinking it and given it to patients who have reported uh, wonderful results. So I, I think that yeah. it's, it's important for us, you know, out here in the world to consider all the different uses of this plant because yeah. what we might sometimes consider as waste might actually be gold to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we never thought of that at that time, but uh, we knew the plants liked it. Yeah. Mm, awesome. And uh, so when someone like Nick T says mechanically separated trichomes, he's talking about basically using your tech that he learned from you to, to separate the trichomes in this yeah. uh, machine, this washing machine. Yeah, in the washing machine. The thing is, if you use the dry sift, that's for people who really appreciate the aroma and the taste, you know? And if uh, you start washing it, I believe some of the aroma and taste goes, I think maybe it's on the outside of the crystals. Mm. So it has less aroma and taste, but it's a goddamn stronger. So mm. I prefer the isolator or bubbleator. For water. sure. Yes. I think that's one of the reasons why the water is so effective is because there's so many terpenes in it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and spicy, yeah. it's good, good, what I would call good medicine, what I do yeah. call good medicine. <laughs> so yeah, we never thought about uh, calling it medicine, but I must tell you, until about 10 years ago, I thought I was a recreative smoker. And then it suddenly hit me, man, in all those uh, years of smoking, well over 50 by now. I never really got sick. I managed to raise four kids pretty much on my own without having Best. breakdowns. And uh, so now I realize maybe it was my medicine all along. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. You, you, you've had the fortunate experience of being able to smile through your cannabis use for much of your life, where many of us have had to hide that smile. <laughs> but just like my parents or family being like, you know, I, I would be, too happy. They'd be like, you're high. <laughs> They'd be like, isn't this a good thing? You know, <laughs> happiness. And now here we are in the world. Everybody is just, you know, not everybody, but a lot more people are being, uh, you know, way more accepting of this. And, uh, and you know, the, the, the research is coming out, you know, even as far as things like entheogens, psychedelics, you know, people are starting to open up to as well, which is a whole other category of things. Um, what I want to ask you about is, how has the game changed from when, I mean, you know, technology always advances, the world seems to evolve in many ways. What have you noticed from the original, from what you remember as the original hashish, you know, might be, some might call it the OG, you know. The original OG. hashish was made uh, by hand in, uh, mm. in places like Afghanistan. They used to make the best and still do maybe. But um you know that uh, there's progress and not everybody is using my machines no more because younger people have come up with better and smarter ideas. That's mm -hmm. the way of the world. I mean, I was compared with architecture. You know, you don't want to build the same buildings forever. Mm -hmm. Modernize it, changes. And, and so with the hash, I mean, there were no extracts before. I mean, there was no uh, sauce. There was no any of these things. 
So these get developed and I think this is still continuing. I used to think every time I came to the States, there was like a whole new range of products <laughs> on the market <laughs> or available. So is that one of the things you're noticing that the tech, the tech is advancing more so outside of Amsterdam and you guys are kind of preserving what you are used to familiar with? No, or, you know, I, I, I haven't been there Amsterdam yet. is a sad story. You know, we used to be ahead of everything and then somehow we voted totally the wrong people. And mm. even now they're still wanting to uh, close more coffee shops in the city. Our mayor came out to the statement about a month ago. Now, what she would really like is to forbid uh, foreigners to go into any of the Amsterdam coffee shops. I mean, that's what? just crazy. Um, I think she doesn't realize if she really wants to do that, she's going to have another problem, and she'll have like a couple thousand street dealers on the week on the on the road within a within a couple of weeks. Is that yeah. what she wants? Isn't it better to just have the coffee shops? But they're also kind of in a weird state. You know, we had coffee shops. We have them now for 40 years. To sell the weed is tolerated. It's not legal. Uh, you know, they have to pay a lot of taxes. And... Um, to buy uh, their supplies. Hmm? To buy their supplies. No, then, yeah, but that's just recent. Anyway, yeah, nowadays, even the banks are getting involved. Like, they can, uh, they want everything to be paid by bank in, instead of cash. Uh, then at the end of the month, the bank says, well, I'm gonna, gonna give you that. That may be not enough for him to buy next month's supply that he needs for his shop. Mm-hmm. And then there's all kind of weird things going on. You know, it's just uh, in a very negative uh, cycle right now. We'll see what happens. Sounds like, you know, voting is so important. And at the same time, even more important, people who are electable, you know, investable. And it's it also sounds like there were people who had the interest of the betterment for the people of Amsterdam, as well as the the city, or, or, um, you know, the whole community at large um whereas now it seems like the funneling and the the lack of uh of uh well let's just call it you know full-on um transparency that they're looking to create from what i'm hearing is you know uh, the overlord of control you know and uh, uh, regulations over here mm. Same things happen here in Colorado, believe it or not. People don't even understand. And at the same time, they just uh, had uh, a bill that got presented to limit the THC content in dispensaries, which is just mind boggling. You know, they tried to do that here about four or five years ago. I don't know if they ever really because then you have to also uh, go look and see and test and see. <laughs> and then well, that creates to, jobs. I think somewhere it's on paper still. <laughs> yeah, God willing, you know, <laughs> you, you, you won't get in trouble for your tomato being too red. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and with all we know, you know, the, the reason, aside from the fact that I love, you know, I love cannabis and it's, uh, it's been my medicine for a long time, whether or not I even knew it. I remember I would used to smoke in the bathroom because I get it to open the window. And, you know, sometimes I'd be in there and I have to go to the bathroom, but then I realized if I smoked, I didn't have to go to the bathroom anymore. And I'm like, wow, one day this is going to be medicine, you know, even though it already was. And for thousands of years, it's been. Yeah. And, uh, and, and so when I learned many years later, um, a friend of mine had leukemia and, uh, <sighs> Um, I, I began to uh, actually, I met somebody else and then I ended up meeting, uh, I met Nikati at some point. I met Jason Love at some point and them two together were feeding me information from different sides about what they were working with. And Love had, uh, had, uh, you know, the FICO, the Rick Simpson oil and Nikati at that time was playing around with, uh, CBD 
And um, so they just kept giving it to me and being like, here, see what this does. Or here, help somebody. Because they knew I, I wanted to help people. And um, so that just happened. And once you see it work, nothing, what else matters as much, you know? And even eating the hash like you make, you know, THCA is so beneficial and it's so much more energetic, less psych psychoactive, really, really enjoyable. And that's why, you know, I, I believe that's why deer, like you grow outdoors and deer will eat your plants because they're looking for those, those raw cannabinoids to make them nice and strong, you know? I uh, sell a lot of books in my uh, shop and um, we hmm. used to have this book, I'm afraid it sold out. And it was all the animals that like to get high. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta look uh, they, would have, they would have an elephant in the jungle eating uh, 50 kilos of rock. <laughs> being totally alcoholic. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> okay. Watch out for that elephant. It'll eat your whole crop. <laughs> That's hilarious. You know, everybody... Uh, all vertebrates have an endocannabinoid system. And it's amazing how there's, you know, people who are keeping us from helping ourselves, from regulating our ability to regulate our major bodily systems, like our immune system, our digestive system, our neurological system, our endocannabinoid system is so important. And it's, it seems to me that education is the first step because if we, once we know then we could begin to utilize that alphabet to create words and start understanding things and have conversations. And, and really it just takes caring. And that's why. Originally, originally I always used to think they're against marijuana because they don't want the people start thinking. Mm. You know, it's, it's a big thing. If, if those of us like Dr. Bob says that the endocannabinoid deficient are, are uh, living in, in, in fear and they want to control. And those of us who are cannabinoid, you know, uh, balanced, we're, we're content. We're not looking to control anybody else. And so, you know, in that way, if I have fortunes and I have channels of, you know, business that's going on, and I know deep down that it's probably not good for you. And at the same time, if you really knew what was going on, you probably wouldn't even use it. Well, then it's been my best interest for the pocket and for the whole conglomerate to make sure that we keep that cover over your eyes and at the same time, you know, don't even allow you or throw you in jail if you go outside of the box and start thinking for yourself. Yeah. Well, that's what uh, they don't like. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm, I'm so happy that uh, the uh, psychedelic movement, you know, and the microdosing movement is, is, is becoming more acceptable in the States because it allows us more, introspection and once we begin to you know connect with ourselves we begin to understand our impact in so many ways on ourselves on each other and then we can really have a conversation and, and and harmonize which i feel like is so needed in our world you know like the what did bob marley do when the politician when when both parties in jamaica were at at uh at heads he came out and he's you know loved for peace and sang for peace, you know, and just harmonize because we're beings of frequency, vibrational beings. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was already around in the sixties and had the original sunshine and all these names from the old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My mother was at Woodstock and I'm, and, and, you know, salute to her. At the same time, many people in that generation have become what they haven't, what they were kind of against. And that's what I saw at Occupy Wall Street. That's, um, you know, those the kind of situations where there's really good intent, though the, the, the strategy isn't really there. And that's everything. And people who are more organized are probably going to get way further than, than, than the people who aren't, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it, that, that when I remember when, uh, when Obama came in office and, and weed started becoming more acceptable. And I was like, um, I was thinking like, man, they, they're going to allow everybody to get high so that we don't care. We don't go into the into the you know, politicians offices anymore. We just like stay inside and puff because they're trying to keep us off the streets, you know. You know? <laughs> yeah. Are, um, so. 
out there in Amsterdam, um, or or let's say, so you have a shop out there. Is that what you were saying? Yeah. Well, it's a warehouse, but people can come and buy our products. Yeah. Cool, cool. What is it, what is it called? It's called Pollinator Company. Pollinator Company. And still, at, at least at this time, the tourists can frequent your establishment. Yeah, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody can visit the establishment. It's just more, there's less tourists in town right now. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. COVID is doing a number on the world in many ways, I'm sure. And I don't really have a shop like a shop shop. It's, okay. It's a warehouse, so people come in and come and have coffee in the office and decide what they want, and we'll show them around. And nice. Is, do you, I is, I'm building a museum to kind of get rid of all the stuff that was cluttering up my house and all the corners <laughs> of the business. Uh, that's, that's a great a, idea. Yeah. Time to memorialize some th- uh, many things, I'm sure. Actually, right behind me, you can see. You mm. see all those little frames there? Mm. That's from the Wall of Fame. And <laughs> each one contains a little bit of hash. And one <laughs> will come from Hawaii. The other one from Kazakhstan. There's one that came from Laos to Switzerland to Amsterdam. Uh, they're from New York. They're from Colombia. From all over. People have to drop them off or something. So, yeah. I love it. Museum, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> is it is it going to be called the hash museum no we already have a hash museum you it's, have a hash museum though yeah, yeah. that's uh ben drunkers from sensi suits cool yes. cool what uh what's your museum going to be called have you had a name yet no really i think just okay. museum. Yeah. Museum. <laughs> oh, my daughter says mila's museum <laughs> love it <laughs> well you know all the best to your uh, your joyful endeavors. It seems like you you share your passion with our world, and what better way to overflow our joy is to share it and 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 continue to uh, feel great in our life. We got this body, you know. We might as well move around, but <laughs> so. Um, Did you, you ever know- manage to get hold of my book? Pardon me. Did you ever manage to get hold of my book? Not yet. Okay. Because then you could read all about it. It's my autobiography. Mm. There's all my trips in the States and all around the world. And also what I did before I started Pollinator Company when I was 50 when I did that. So, Wow. That's um, really inspirational. You know, a lot of people don't. Well, a lot of people have the ability to realize that at any given time we can, you know, create a new beginning. And so I salute you for, uh, you know, doing whatever you want to do. <laughs> I'll probably do that anyway. <laughs> I'm kind of Absolutely. used to doing what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's to that, you know, here's to this. Yeah. And, um, and I think also, yeah, people should just follow their dreams and actually go and do it and not only dream about it. Mm, that's the biggest deal. I, I, I say, you know, there's trying and there's doing. And those yeah. of us who do, we do. Those of us who tried, stopped. Uh, other than that, if you're doing it, you're doing it. And so I understand the semantics, but, you know, you're out there, you're doing it. And I like to I like to bring people on this show who I look at as a luminary. And, you know, I feel like it's important to get our flowers while we're alive. And it's important to open up a window into true inspiration. So, you know, um, because you're living the dream, let's be honest. And yeah. what you love nobody else loves what you love the way you love it. And that's your magic and you living in your magic makes you magical. And anybody who knows of you probably feels the same way. And we all have that power. We all have this power to recognize, or at least first identify assess, and then identify what we love, how we love it. We don't always want to do that for a living. Some of us don't want to, you know, uh, you know, well, lucky the people that can. <laughs> mm, well, so are we. <laughs> so wait, how many of us have benefited in, in uh joyful ways because you decided to do what you love so that right there is a testament to just just do it you know 
And um, so thank you. Really, thank you. Is there anything at all that you walk around in the world and you're like, man, I just really wish people knew this, you know? Is there anything like that? Because I'm sure you have a lot of wisdom, but this would be a great time to share something like that. Well, it'd be great if uh, this legalization movement actually is going to happen for real. <laughs> mm. So talk about that. What do you mean for real? Like, what, what does it look like to you? Well, basically, that it's kind of normalized, you know, that it isn't such a poor thing and that people just accept it like they accept a lot of other things. And somehow there's always a stigma if you're a grower or a smoker and all these things. Or there is over here anyway. And that's kind of sad. Yeah, I wish people would, uh, yeah, realize more where things are at. And, uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, That's you cool. also kind of create your reality. <laughs> in a way, is because how you are perceiving it. It's not that it's suddenly different, but your perception of it can be different. And yeah, that helps to, uh, yeah, I think acceptance is a big thing anyway. People are always striving for something else, but maybe people can more accept what they got. Gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are so blessed. First and foremost, we get to breathe. If you've ever seen your loved one take a last breath, you know how important yeah. each breath is. It's a miracle, really. And we get to share this together fly through space together at the same time yeah. and share what we love. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Talk together even though we're God knows how many thousand miles apart. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Definitely yeah. miracles coming through every day. And, uh, and that's what, you know, revealing love and revealing God is, is when we step up, you know, we share our love. We can be that miracle in somebody else's life. And even, you know, it affects us too, straight up. Yeah. That's really been so nice talking. I hope one time we get a chance to meet up. Yes. And we have met, it was very brief. Oh, and um, <laughs> ah, it's all love. It's all love. I mean, who's supposed to remember? We was, everybody's smoking. It was at a cannabis festival. I'll send us, I'll, I'll resend you the picture of us because I definitely took one to memorialize meeting you and I just um, I just love you. And, you know, I'm really, really good friends with Nick and T. And obviously he learned so much from you. And we I benefit have to him because you'll see him before I do. <laughs> <laughs> I absolutely will. And um, and uh, you and you and actually everyone, you know, it's like a, it's good. <laughs> mm. Yes. Well. All the power and and uh, health and uh, abundance to you, and and may you continue to thrive and uh, and shine. And you know, one of the ways that I like to end this uh, or conclude this uh, this podcast is to share a deep breath. So, if you be so kind, on the count of three, everybody will take a nice deep breath and enjoy the miracle of life together. One, two, three. Mila, thank you so much. Okay. Oh, hey, how do people find your book? It's called uh, Mila, How I Became the Hash Queen. And the easiest is to go and look on the website of Pollinator Company. And it's right there. And? Yeah, and that's pollinator.nl. Uh, NL is for Netherlands. Beautiful. Pollinator. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. And, okay. uh, all the best to you. Okay, and you too. <laughs> Talk soon, and I look forward to seeing you in person soon enough. Yes, definitely. All right. Love. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Blessings. Subscribe to the Farms Not Farms podcast on Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts.